Yeah. That isn't. If you drink that much while a show, my voice will have no trouble with it. <laughs> this is in the first place. You know somewhere, don't you, Bob? The Bullfrog sure is one of the greatest restaurants. Remember from Facebook? Is that what we're here for? Oh, I didn't know. That. Okay, John, I just really wanted to start talking chronologically about how you got started with shadows and, and making films yourself. Why? Why did you make shadows? Why? Remembering that I'm not, you know, my question is not going to be heard anywhere at all. Uh, uh, shadows, uh, like any other thing, was an accident. Accidental. Uh, desire to express oneself. Uh, obsessive. Like we all are. We're all obsessive. I am. Uh, and we all, uh, I think we're going for a way of saying something that might be different than uh, the normal, conventional, boring way of saying something that most people like in an audience because they are, uh, uh, they are dull in their own lives. My God. It's uh, true. It's true. Oh, Nobody's going to go to the picture. So what? <laughs> Let them not go. The world is not comprised, not comprised of, shooting, of a group of people that... Oh. Uh, uh, have opinions and, and and lack emotion, and we make pictures of emotion. And uh, yeah, if people go to see them, they will they will become touched and emotional in ways that they have never experienced before. And uh, if they want to, they can go. If they don't want to, it's a free country. They don't have to go. Tell me what, what Shadows was about. The storyline. Shadows was about youth. It was about young people as we had known it. And we try to do it realistically, not uh, Andy Hardy. Not that there's anything wrong with Andy Hardy, but uh, I was a kid and I just was as tough and as, as mixed up and screwed up as everyone, anyone else. And we just did it in the 1950s when everything was wonderful. We made a, a picture about the aimlessness and the wandering of young people and the emotional qualities that they possessed. And that's what it was about. And many people loved it. About faces, what led you to doing faces? Faces uh, was uh, my boredom, my own boredom with uh, uh, older women and older men that try to be 18. And it bored me so much, angered me so much that uh, we made this film. And we got some fantastic actors Seymour Cassell, Jenna, Lynn Carlin, John Marley, and uh, Val Avery. Fred Draper. They were, they were so much better than the original concept that they made the picture quite wonderful. And I fell in love with actors because uh, uh, my, my own hostility and my own weakness came out in the picture and, and they softened it and they made it human. And, <laughs> and I began to uh, realize that actors are uh, quite unique people that no one else is like, no, no other people are like. I, I don't get you, Don. Would you have had any problems making a film yourself outside the studio system, making it yourself? I don't understand you. Were there, were there any problems in making it yourself? I mean, there are always problems, but my problems are my own. I mean, I'm not trying to be hostile or anything like that, but I just find uh, business boring, quite boring. It's so boring, and, and to talk about business, uh, you'd have to talk to the people that run the business who we're all quite ashamed of. The scene that we have girl tries to commit suicide making faces. What was the storyline in Faces? What was the storyline in yeah, Faces? The couple was together and she was trying to attempt to... I think that women... Uh, I think that women... Uh, Lynn Carlin, who played this wife of uh, John Marley, was uh, quite under. Uh, under the influence if you will, of, of, uh, of marriage, what it was supposed to be like. And they came home, they had a drink, they talked very nicely, and they didn't love each other. And it was their quest to find something that was substantial in their marriage that, that prompted the picture, that prompted the picture. Because I, I would see married couples who were lying to one another, who had nothing to do with one another in their lives. If their tastes coincided, they felt that they were
quite remarkable in their marriage. And people would say, oh, they're so wonderful together. And uh, I don't, re I really like people, you see. I really like people. I don't like business or corporate structures or anything like that, but I do like people. And, and, and married people, there's so many people that get together that don't communicate anything. And they come home and they just look at each other and they say, how are you? How was the day? What, did, what happened? And they have no love. And that picture was a, a, a plea for returning to uh, some kind of real communication. The actors in the picture, were they adding on their own to it, their own views, their own? Yeah. Seymour, who was in the picture, was uh, incredible. He was nominated for an Academy Award the first time out. Lynn Carlin was nominated for the Academy Award. I was nominated for the Academy Award for the script. And it was worth it. It was uh, maybe one of the best pictures ever made. Would you like to make more like that? No. No, I wouldn't. I don't know. I just wouldn't. So when you went from there into what was more of a studio picture with husbands, where you got involved with Ben and Peter. That was a picture of sheer love. Uh, Gazara, Falk, myself, Sam Shaw, and uh, Al Rubin made it, got together and made a picture. And we, we found friendship. And we knew the meaning of uh, male love, uh, not homosexual love but uh, love of oneself. And the women were quite jealous of that picture. They really hated that movie because they couldn't find a friendship as uh, unique and as prosperous as that picture uh, was. Uh, um, that picture was maybe a feeling that, uh, that all young people, all young people have gone through, all men have gone through uh, a, a tremendous feeling of camaraderie, and then uh, they're, they're coerced into feeling <clears throat> that that's a wrong feeling, and that life is a, a series of, of misadventures and, and friendless adventures. But Husbands was a series of love adventures between men, and uh, in many ways it was my favorite film. Why, you know, you said this before, why those particular actors, why Ben and, and Peter? Why do you like working with Ben and Peter? We were all black in those days, you know what I mean? Uh, we had a black atmosphere about us, and, and we went to a major studio, and they said, well, if you could get one blonde and two in blacks... Put a blonde and, uh, in the middle, it might be... Uh, so uh, I didn't feel I looked like Ben, and Ben didn't feel he looked like me, and, and uh, but, you know, you can't tell us apart, you know? <laughs> But we had fun. We had a lot of fun on that picture. It was a picture of ultimate love. Ben, what about you on that picture? Did you like making it? Oh, yeah. It's probably the, uh, the, the most fun I've ever had creatively. And I don't mean fun cutting up, because a lot of people think that John and I and Peter were friends before we made that picture. We didn't know each other before we made that picture. We became friends during the making of the picture, working on be the friendship of the people in the picture. We found out more and more about each other, the rotten parts and the good parts. And we decided we liked each other and trusted each other. That took time. That took uh, at least uh, until after the picture was over. That kind of uh, thing. And we really knew what it was all about. That's right. Was it parts of you personally, yourselves, in, those, in the picture, the character you played? I, speaking for myself, I think so. A lot of it. I started slow, but ended uh, to the point where when we shot the goodbye scene, uh, it was almost near the end of the wrapping of the picture. You know, the goodbye scene where they leave me in London. Well, the tears, I find myself uh, really saying goodbye to a wonderful experience I had had. And that's the friendship of these two guys working together, having it all, so it all sort of combined into, I'm proud, that scene uh, for me is one of the best scenes ever on film. Did you shoot it in sequence that you were building yes. after that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I wanted to ask you, too, about, about husbands. You've talked about the mortality of men, people learn their own mortality from a film like husbands. And is that what they were really aware of? Their friend dies right at the beginning. Well, I th one of the reasons that Ben and Peter and I were in the film is that we were all quite immature. And uh, uh, we were late starters. So... Uh, uh, all young men 
realize that they are supermen or that they're that they are uh, absolutely immortal if one of your friends dies it's a sad and terrifying experience and something that's lost from your life like a member of your family dying and that's what the picture was about a recounting uh, of a story of who we were and what we were to one another and who was this lost man that had died and did we have anything left <coughs> was there anything of us that was mortal that we could share where did you get some of the ideas like, like say in the bar scene or scenes from the people if it wasn't exactly your own lives and your own personal lives your own marriages in other words what Suggested uh, for the for the role. What? Yeah, I keep on saying that. No, I keep on saying that. Oh, I don't care. What? You Paul, shouldn't say tell me. No. Why? Well, it's not important. Camera's rolling, gentlemen. Well, that's not. Look okay. at the producer. After the young lady. Are you starting with us? What was it you right, just fine. said, Paul? Because I really have now, to know. It was so interesting. <laughs> you put more together. John, John okay. please pay attention, John. The young lady's asking you a question. I've been so horrible as a husband uh, in my life uh, that the long hours, the incredible ambition to try to make something that would satisfy me, the uh, the obscure. Uh, conversations that have no meaning to anybody except to, to artists for so long <coughs> that I thought my god look at this woman who has stood behind me every cent every inch of the way thinking my god he has such uh, 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 um, an incredible potential if he only he would listen you know and so suddenly I thought, all right, I, wanted to, I would like to make a picture to really say something about uh, a person that was more that, to me than, than just a, a, a face or a figure or a mother or a, a homemaker or an actress or something. I really wanted to make a film about a woman that was going through tremendous trials and most of the time was alone. And... Uh, subject to a man's whim, bossiness, ignorance, insecurity, and double cross. And that's what the picture was about. It was about, uh, it was about a woman and what she would go through if, if she had a voice. I thought Peter Falk was the most brilliant I've ever seen him, and he's a brilliant actor. I thought he was the kind of a man that 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 uh, <clears throat> was better than most because he loved his wife, and he was behind her, and he, like most of us, couldn't comprehend exactly the meaning of someone that loves you, like most of us. And uh, the rest of it is all political nonsense. Jenna, what about you? Were you, is any of Mabel you? Well, obviously it is not our life. I'm an actress and, and uh, I have an outside life that is separate from my home life. And yet, Every woman who loves a man, I think, uh, especially women my age, who have been brought up in a certain tradition, try so hard to be um, perfect, really, truly, a, a perfect uh, wife, a perfect mother, perfect everything, so that that part did relate to me. I have three children, the picture, in the picture, I had three children. I am a, a, of, a, of a northern background. 
uh, John is of a, a Mediterranean background, that was true in the movie. However, John and I were always professionals, and, and we started out as actors, and, and uh, it, it, it isn't the same, and yet people who love each other, no matter whether their work is for the, for the city, as we were in, in uh, uh, Woman Under the Influence, or whether you're an actress, there is a certain part of you that is so committed to trying to be what the other person expects of you that in that way, I was close to the role. Um, it's the most meaningful role that I had played up until that time, uh, even though and now, opening night, which we've just played, and which is uh, um, about and uh, th about really the alternate part of me, the actress part. I, I think that uh, woman under the influence was the first time I'd had to examine closely what I had uh, entered into when I was very young because John and I have been married a long time, we married very young. And when I, when I entered marriage with John, I, had, I brought with me all of the values that were traditional at that time. And, and I have a great deal of sympathy for women who, who throw, throw themselves on the rocks of domesticity, they, or, or anything really, but especially that they, they try so hard to be perfect. And, and of course, that's impossible for anyone, actress, uh, housewife, scientist, no matter what it is, it's, it's a truly imperfect thing. In fact, it's presumptuous to try to be perfect. And yet, uh, many of us have been programmed to that point of view. And the almost inevitable conclusion is, is uh, failure. And the fact that you have to sooner or later recognize that love is not a constant thing that goes bzzz, it's like an EKG thing that goes bzzz, 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 bzzz. In, in Woman Under the Influence, Peter, who, who played my husband, was from a traditional um, Italian background. He, he, he had his idea of what a wife should be. And my character was a Scandinavian, tried to fit into it. And he could not, the same thing that attracted him, the differentness when we were courting, got on his nerves when we were married. Everybody disapproved of it, his mother, his, his, uh, his friends, it was kind of an embarrassment. And so the, the love went this way and this way and this way, and the only thing is that trying to be perfect, my character, could not stand any rejection. And I find women of very sophisticated background still cannot stand any rejection from their husband and, and uh, crumble. So that it was a, it was a, uh, it was a fascinating part for me. I, I don't imagine any part really will be as meaningful to me as, as that. Though, opening night, in a way, I have to credit John because he's not at all as any man was from my background when I was a kid because they expected certain things and, and John will, will take as a, as a playwright and examine so thoroughly one side and then the alternate side without any preconceived uh, uh, notions about how they should act. I find that acting, you know, they always say that you take all of your experiences from life to acting. I must say that, that um, I take my experiences from acting to life. And uh, I'm really, it, it's, uh, uh, a revelation to me. How would you prepare when she's breaking down so you do that that's not a part of your life? How would you get inside of somebody who's having a breakdown? 
Well, you see, we shoot in Why was she having a breakdown? She wasn't having a breakdown. In women? In women under the influence? Yes. No, she was having a disappointment. Well, that's a question. I don't semantics. Think, I don't think that woman changed one iota. He changed. He fell out of love with her. He committed her. She was not having a breakdown. She well, felt the double cross. That was a betrayal. But the result was what, what most people would consider a breakdown. What, what I consider a breakdown. Well, I have had in my life a lot of things happen, and I've been very disloyal. In, in, and not in the, the terms that, how, that how teenagers would know disloyalty. <laughs> um, really, excuse it's me, the truth. What was it? That you meant? <laughs> but it's, it, 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 there's a uh, there's a question. I think that there is a, a a pull and a push between whether you're an individual, as I feel right now, or whether you're uh, part of a society. And I think we are all of us pulled and pushed between these two things constantly. And you keep on saying, do I want to be what I am, or do I want to be part of it? John, John what do you want? Not. That's a slate in television. Ooh. Wonderful. It looks That's like an ice cream. Are you rolling now? Oh, I love it. Go. <laughs> Well, from my point of view, I, I, I can't speak for John because no matter how much you love someone, it's really presumptuous to speak for someone else. But from my point of view, on uh, <laughs> students, <laughs> I love speaking for someone else. <laughs> well, no, I, I no, I, I I know that joking, but. I'm always very happy when anyone takes his own... After all, everyone goes to the movie with himself or herself. I was very surprised. When, when we first made Woman Under the Influence, I said, John, gosh, nobody 18 or 20 is going to even know what we're talking about. And then I found that, that uh, young people would stop us on the street and they'd say, that's my mom and dad, you know. That's what I grew up in. And I was very happy, really. And then other people, you know, in their 30s and stuff, would say, it's the story of my life. And then there'd be other people, 90, who would say, mm, that's exactly what I went through. And that was, I, I don't know, it was the most satisfying thing as a performance that I'd ever done. So that. I um, I really would say, from my point of view, I don't want any. I don't want to tell anybody what to think. I just hope that they'll be able to relate it some way into their lives. John, what about? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting off the hook, right? I agree. Think what you want. <laughs> Opening night. <laughs> at, the, uh, at the Fox Wilshire Theater. <laughs> Come, we're, we're quite lonely without, yeah. without the masses. <laughs> we must have masses of people. Uh, the picture is opening night. Uh, actually, one of the things I enjoy about the film, outside of the marvelous performances, and they are marvelous performances, is that, that the other character in the play, the most important character in the play, is the audience. And when the film is jammed with people and they begin to respond, and I was sitting in the back of the theater watching the audience, and when the theater is jammed, the audience reaction in the movie house is exactly the audience reaction that was in the theater the day That's that true. we shot. That's true. And it's so thrilling to me to see uh, that we didn't fake it and that an audience can really respond to itself within this film uh, and that they're not shut out, they're not treated like two-year-old uh, children, that they, they are allowed to see uh, the workings of, of theatrical people as they are, not like they've ever been depicted before.
This is an actress, an artist, who is per perhaps more obsessed with the creative process than anyone else in, in, in the show. Uh, ben plays the director, Paul is the producer, Joan Blondell is the writer, I'm another actor. Uh, Seymour is a, 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 a Seymour Cassell who comes on, and Peter Falk is Peter Falk, and, and uh, uh, Peter Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich, and other people come on to the thing, but the one person in the, in the, in the film that is obsessed and is wrong is a professional woman who says, I want to do my job the best that I can. And she's told not to because of society. She's told uh, she'll be fired. She's told she's too old. Age comes up. Well, it's the truth. Age is the truth. And she's confused by it. And she examines it. And she's one of the finest people I've ever seen in my life. And we go back and forth between uh, our own lives on the screen, the theatricality involved, and uh, uh, the, the blessing of expressing oneself, you know? I'm not ashamed of that. I think it's wonderful to express <coughs> oneself. When we started this movie, I was afraid of this movie because I thought no one really is interest, that interested in actors or what they really go through if we were really to put it on the line. And I, I, I look at the audience that watches this film and they are interested and I don't care where they come from. They are interested in this movie, and they're interested in theatricality because almost everyone wants to be funny. Almost everybody wants to be dramatic. Almost everyone wants to be better than anyone else. Uh, it is uh, an incredible movie. To me, it's the finest movie I've ever had anything to do with. I love this movie, and I think everyone should go to see it, and not enough people are coming to see it. And I'm telling you, they're not going to see something stupid. They're going to see something that challenges their own intelligence and awakens their own emotions. And I like it. I like that movie. And I, uh, I've never asked anyone to go to see the movie. I want to see Lines Around the Block tomorrow. <laughs> uh, really, Lines Around the Block, because it's, this is a, a stupid town. It is a stupid town in the sense that it is the, the, uh, maybe the one of the largest cities in the world. It's lazy. It's a polite. It is so sissy in its mentality, so go along with everything that goes along. It's uh, corporate owned, it's a, it's a town owned by Hollywood, and it's about time it grew up. It's about time that it, 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 it took art and said, come on baby, show me something. And we're showing them something. And there are not many people showing anything. And there are not many people that will go out and put themselves on a line in this world today because everyone's frightened. We're doing it for you. And I'm telling you that you're going to see the greatest performances, and that goes for Paul, Jenna, Ben, Seymour, me, everybody. And I'm sick. I'm sick that this is such a little sissy town that they will only go to see something that is going to be successful that a corporation says is great. And I'm telling you, we have something so much better so wonderful that you are just privileged to see this movie. I'm sick because there are just such a bunch of sissies in this world that they won't go out and see something that's wonderful. And they hear it's wonderful, and other people will tell them it's wonderful. But is it going to be a success? Is it going to be a success? I don't care if it's going to be a success. I want those suckers to come in there and to see this movie because they'll see what they always wanted to be, and that is to be theatrical to be wonderful, to be, to be liked, to be friends, to, be, uh, to have something in their life that is warmer, and to regard someone that has more guts than you do, and to be inspired by people. And I'm not ashamed of it. I, I really hate this nonsense. Kill somebody, shoot them in the head, the blood pours out. Isn't that wonderful? I hate it. I hate it. And, I, I, and, I, and I, I feel sad for all the youth that has to be coerced into that thing, that they feel sick and sorry because they have nothing to go to. And we're going to show, I, I'm not saying that we're superhuman. We just are terrific people. We're terrific. 
We are sensational. We're better than all those guys that steal from their corporations, that, that, uh, 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 that stand up and say, we're going to rip off. I don't care, man. I don't care. It's sick. It's sick. I'm tired of that nonsense. I, I, I really feel more for the young people in this world. I really believe in them. I think that they're terrific, but they have nobody showed them the way. And they're a bunch of sheep. And I'm telling you that. They go here. No, it's no good. OK, we'll go here. No, it's no good. It's wonderful. We'll go here. This picture is terrific. Everyone should see it. And every mother should take their kid to see it. And everybody should see this movie, because it's better than anything out. And that's the way it is. I'm sorry, baby. That's the way it is. I take a lot of pride, and I can watch that movie 500 times because I'm seeing something absolutely sheerly beautiful and inspiring. And I think that's important. And everyone has made a love, religion, God. Time magazine had the audacity to kill God. Those people are floundering and, and walking around the world with nothing in their lives simply because uh, 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 they are uh, uh, not led by anybody of any responsibility. And I, I don't want to lead anybody. He'll lead, I'll lead, we'll all go and we'll take a chance and we'll try to express ourselves and hope that somebody will recognize that expression. And uh, uh, I don't care about CBS, NBC, ABC, television sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that'll get on. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be a good I don't really mean it sucks. <laughs> that, that, that they're going to keep forever. I know you ran out, didn't you? <laughs> well, Brett. <laughs> <as, laughs> <laughs> is, is that okay? Are we done? What's wrong with no. you? <laughs> no, we're going to stay here now. To well, you'll never get another like this. Give us eight minutes because that. That's a frustration and it's sad because. Ben, I'm not in it. It's a close-up. Yeah, well, there's I'm going to him, so he's there. But you, he may pull John, it's my turn. Will you keep quiet, please? Again? They're going to go to you next. Give me a break. We ready? Give me a break. I have a cold. Oh, you've been? You're not resonant enough without a cold? Unbelievable. It's way down here. The voice is way down. Ben, I want to ask you two things. One, about your feelings about opening night and your feelings of working in this, in this group of people with John, for him, with him, however. Which first? Talk about John first and you remember what, what he was just saying. What is it about the group, you and Peter and John, working together? You're an actor who's done a lot of films, a lot of things. But there's something that makes you want to do these kind of films. Say something, things you probably Save. couldn't do elsewhere. Well, yeah. Uh, there, there are two reasons. One is that usually, usually, uh, in the process of your career, where you make your money, you know, and pay your rent, and uh, and uh, live well and buy the Mercedes Benz, usually you're among strangers. By that I mean uh, you get a call from your agent who says, "Geez, they're offering you so and so." So and so, they're on. He's rolling. <laughs> he says, uh, "You show up in uh, Munich or uh, Istanbul, uh, and you'll be there. And you take your plane a couple of days before shooting, and you arrive in the location. You meet a group of strangers, and you're thrown into a love scene with a leading lady, who you do not know, hardly know her name. And there you are, expecting, expected, to create some sort of humanity and feelings." And, and to explore a human being and to show what makes a man a man, etc. Well, it's impossible, really. Usually those pictures are highly structured, highly plotted. It's another kind of entertainment. It is entertainment, and it's, it's terrific. There's a place for that. Uh, with John, it, it's uh, why I work with John, it's, it's another side of my soul, and that is, uh, that is exploring the time and the care to explore feelings between people, not plot points between people, because life isn't plot points. 
life isn't keeping each other excited by surprising each other constantly. So uh, it, uh, and, and that's, and very few directors, John is one of the very few who give the actors opportunities to struggle with themselves in a role, to use as much of themselves as they can in a role, and he takes the time and the patience and the care to see that those areas of human relationships are explored. Can I say that something? Yeah. Sure. I asked Ben to be in this picture, and he, and he said, uh, well, I'm doing a, a Shakespearean play. And he said, what is it? I said, well, read it. And he read it, and he said, John, there's nothing in it for me. Jenna has everything, <laughs> and I, I don't have anything. And I said, take the director. The, the director is good. And he said, well, I, then I'd have to cancel out this play. And he called me, and he said, no, I can't do it. And I thought, son of a gun, more than that. <laughs> and then he came in a couple of days later and he said, I want to do it, I'll, I'll do it, but I want to play the actor. And because Ben is an actor, he wanted to associate himself with an actor. He said, I think that the director is an idiot. And I said, I think it's the best part in the picture. And... <laughs> You told me my part was the best part of the picture. No, I, I said, you're a great actor. My part was the I said, you're a great actor. <laughs> but and he ben, made his part the best part in the picture. But Ben, ben in, in what he does, you see, in what he does in, in opening night is tremendous. Tremendous. Because be he, is, yeah. he, he is a friend of Jenna which never before has been seen on the screen because there's no such thing as a man friend on the screen. It's not commercial. He is a friend. He is an ex-lover. It's, it's an intelligent relationship. It's something that everyone understands. It's so familiar on the screen when people see it that they discount it. It's that familiar. But it's never been done on the screen before. Ben is. Wait a minute. I, I, Enough. Wait a minute. You're wait embarrassing minute. me. Well, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I was in a picture, Dirty Does, and I was nominated for the Academy Award. I never did anything. They couldn't find one review on me that was any good. <laughs> I, and, and only Bob Aldrich thought I was wonderful, and that's why I was nominated for an Academy Award. Now, I really believe that Ben is tremendous because I think he's the first director that's ever been depicted on the screen. And he did it. It's his own creation, and it's beautiful. He is magnificent. I think he's magnificent. Well, we don't measure everything by nominations, John. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I got my vote. Because it's peers <laughs> voting. I'm and I think that all those other, all, all those other people that are, are, are in the thing, I think our people are much better. They're fantastic. <laughs> Paul is fantastic. He's one of the greatest actors for 20 years. 20, ben, 20, 20. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoy that. <laughs> ben is fantastic. Seymour is fantastic. I'm fantastic. But no well, one ever and Jenna is blessed. <laughs> and Jenna is uh, uh, right, ask me the other question. a star by herself. <laughs> Yeah, there was another yeah. piece of that question. <laughs> well, uh, about opening night, it's good. I just returned to the theater in the last couple of years. I went back to Broadway twice in two years. So this picture, uh, you know, came at a time, this picture about the theater came at a time when I rejoined the theater, which is my where I first did my work and where I intend to continue to do my work. So I had a lot of nostalgia to it, first of all, and secondly, uh, the struggle that Jenna goes through as an actress is a struggle I'm well aware of and, uh, uh, and can feel enormous compassion to. The metaphor being that we all struggle 
The actor's struggle is not unlike your struggle, or not unlike a housewife's struggle, and not unlike anyone's struggle to try to be creative, and to try to take life outside of the humdrum, and to give it an extra dimension, right? And this woman wants to take this person she's playing and give that person she's playing something extra, something extraordinary, because we are, all of us, unique. And the thing the actor has to do always is find the unique and extraordinary in the character he's playing, be he, be he the most dismal uh, loser in the world, be or be she. <laughs> what, what I mean is the actor has to like the character he's playing, even if he's Richard III or, uh, or a, a, a sadist. You have to like him. And this woman is searching for something to like in this woman, which is not unlike what we all do. What about getting old in terms of everybody, no matter what age they are, feels they're getting older. They don't want to say their age. Well, I consider myself vintage wine now. I'm just ready to be open and drunk. So I don't have those problems. Actors don't have that. <laughs> Actors don't have that. No, she's being told, you see. She's being told she's getting old. She isn't. She isn't feeling that until people are pressuring her and saying it may be because you're, you don't want to play this age thing. You're afraid of aging. You're afraid of age. I don't think that's her Wasn't fear. Wasn't that the phoniest part of the film? Yeah. yeah. For actors, for, for actors, aging is the phoniest thing that ever lived. Because no actor, <laughs> no actor ever gets old. They get bad. Right. Oh and. And, and uh, uh, that's true. Ball players get old, actors don't. They actors get, get phony, <laughs> they, get, they get mannered, they get, you know, familiar. Scared. Uh, they get scared, they're too fat, or, you know, they're too thin, they're too uh, whatever. But a, a good actor will last forever. Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, uh, Barrymore, Lionel Barrymore. Paul Stewart. Uh, Paul Stewart. I'm going to last forever? You are forever. forever. Because you're a perpetual kid. Better than you were they are years kids. Years. You know it. Actors are kids. We play games. And anyone that thinks that actors play for real are crazy. They are crazy people. Actors are temperamental. There is no actor that's worth his salt that is, that is a, 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 a person that is not an individual. An actor is an individual, and he's speaking from, for some poor little sucker in Podunk or uh, uh, Tarzana, you know, and they, they stand up and they say, uh, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm stupid, I'm this, I'm that, and you identify with them. And when you finish uh, doing that, you are finished. This man is says, well... I thought he was going to say finished. I got very nervous. Paul, Paul, is, Paul is so, so, so absolutely, absolutely dignified that when he gets up on the stage... I'm too old to publicize. I want him to come in. No, I will not. No, please, no, please. please. No, I'm sure you will do very well, please. No, 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 no. You're afraid. <laughs> what? No, it's put okay. put the man. What are you holding? I know. Look, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, what did you, what was the question? As they usually say. <laughs> well, what? Yeah, I know. Of course. Your role in opening night. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I must tell you that. Uh, John and I would see each other occasionally over these many years, and about two years ago he said to me, I'm writing a, a film, and there's a great part in it for you. Now, uh, in, in, in Hollywood over the years, uh, they always tell you that. You know, you meet somebody at a party and they say, boy, there's a great part, and then you never get it, you never hear about it. But it did develop that John did call me in October uh, 1976, and he said, uh, I'm going to send you a script, and, and uh, it's a, you know, I'd like you to play the role. And I read the script, we met, and I, I said, I, I, I love the script, I love the part, and I, I, I think it's marvelous. And uh, then I had to think about it, because I am an actor uh, uh, for so many years that uh, I am conditioned. And that's what John's been talking about uh, a great deal tonight. 
and it's, it was very hard for me to break that uh, that kind of pattern uh, because I was uh, I'm a structurist. I, I mean, I believe in structure in 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 the film and in story and, and in character. And we had many many uh, discussions, and I must say they're all exciting and and and, uh, and interesting and uh, philosophical at times. Uh, but I but I then uh, realized that that uh, he was uh, doing something to me that hadn't been done since the time I worked with Wells, and I as you may know I was in Citizen Kane, which was my first film, and Orson works works that way, he still does, and he he doesn't say uh, uh, please be emotional here, and that's rather cliche, but I mean he'll talk to you for maybe five, ten, twenty minutes. And he's not talking about the character, really. He's talking about an idea, a concept, an emotion, a feeling. And then he says, now let's try it, let's make it, you know. And then you try and you, you, you know. Well, John did that with me. Now, I must say, many times I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Uh, when I say, I mean, I understood the words. But I didn't understand it really, uh, but I would then try. And I remember one scene in particular that, uh, that uh, we worked on, uh, a scene with Jenna, uh, and uh, we finally did it, and something happened to me that surprised me. And when it was over, and he said, cut, uh, I looked at him as, uh, as I'm prone to do, and I said, oh, you know, how was it? I said, I can't do it any better. I, I don't, there's no possibility of my, and he said, please, forget it, it's marvelous, it's beautiful, whatever he usually says. Even if it's as bad, he says, it's beautiful. <laughs> he always says that. He, he kept telling me yeah, every day. Yeah. I must say that John has been telling me for about 20 years now that I'm one of the greatest actors in the world, which he tells everybody. He has the greatest <laughs> grip, mm -hmm. the greatest cameraman, which is lovely. I think it's marvelous because it makes you feel that you are. But uh, I must say that, that making opening night, and it was a long engagement. Uh, it was 16 or 17 weeks. That's a long time to be on a film. As a matter of fact, only a film I made called The Greatest Story Ever Told, which went on forever, uh, was, was longer in terms of being around, you know. But uh, uh, it was always exciting and, 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 and uh, tremendous in, in my feeling. We've, we still have differences, I must tell you that. They're, they're, very, they're, they're very interesting and fun for us because there are two sides of us. I the actor, he the actor, he the director. I am also have been a director for many years. But there's a love thing. I, I love this man and I know he loves me. I mean, uh, as men can love each other. And I, I must say that it's been a marvelous experience. And I, I tell you one thing that John has said, and I think that people should see this film. I don't want to mention this most magnificent actress who phoned me about the film. And uh, 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 she's a delightful lady, and she was most nice. She was really very nice to me, but her her major point was about how John had captured, really captured the theater, but totally captured the theater and the terrible, terrible duress of everybody involved, of everybody. And I must say, I I uh, I was. Uh, I called John and told him this, and they went of an afternoon to see the film. As there weren't a lot of people in the theater, I think there should be more. I think it's a, an extraordinary experience for people to see this tell film. You should John Blondell's story, Paul. And, and I don't well, how Joan kept saying she didn't know what. Oh was yeah, going well, well, it's interesting. For Golden Globe. You know, Joan Blondell and I have been well. We knew each other way back in New York, and then she came to Hollywood. And she was in the film, and uh, she too is a, is a structurist actress. If that's I don't know maybe that I don't know if that word is even correct, but I mean I think uh, you know what I mean. And I uh, I was the only one she knew a long time in the film. All everybody else was strangers to her. She knew them for what they looked like professionally. And I kept saying to her, look, don't worry, Joan. Uh, this is the way it goes with John. He, he, this is the way John works, and this is the way this picture will be made. And she said, I, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Boy, she always knows what she's doing. But she meant that she wanted to have a mark to hit. And she wanted to have the dialogue. Now, we did a scene in the dressing room, 
in which John and, and, and Jenna and, and, and Ben and, and uh, uh, myself, uh, we talked about it a long time, and John did, did well, he always does most of the talking, John does. <laughs> he, he, and, and, uh, and then we finally began the scene, you see. And Joan, for the first time, began to contribute and, and say things. And she found, and then we, after the scene was over, and we did it many times, many ways, she said to me, oh, I see what he's after. And by, you know, by then she, while she was still strange and, and, and uh, 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 was a stranger to the, to the, to this method of, uh, and I don't mean method acting, but I mean this, this procedure. She, she, uh, she was, uh, uh, she fell in, uh, there's one other thing I'd like to say. W there's a moment in the picture, and it's quite, pictorially, it's quite beautiful. Uh, we're backstage, Joan and I, and John said, just say to each other the problem. Jenna uh, is not there for opening night. She's drunk and somewhere. We don't know where she is. And it's a, it's a beautiful darkness and just a hot light on the two of us. And uh, he had, we knew the content of our problem. I is the producer, she is the authoress. And John, I would always have to start it because she couldn't start it. And I would say, well, you know, this is, there'll be another play something like that, and then she would respond. Now, we shot it many times. John whispered and came to me quickly, and he whispered to me, he said, don't speak, let her start. And uh, I was sitting on the arm of the chair, and she's sitting in this settee, and uh, she looked up at me, and, <laughs> and she was waiting for me to help her, you know, to start the scene. And I, I, John had said, let her start. And I'm, I would imagine, I, a film runs pretty fast through a film, you know, it runs 90, 90 foot a minute. And I would say there's 180, maybe 240 feet, it ran through nothing that's been said. And finally she realized that, she, that I wasn't going to say anything. She said, I just can't believe this has happened to us. And then we were into the scene. I think that's the way the scene is still in the yeah. picture, isn't it? Yeah. She starts, see? Now that's the kind of thing that John will tell you and it was, you know, it's a kind of exciting moment for an actor. You fail many times because if you allow yourself to, you know, to get too elaborate, uh, it can be pretty boring. So that, but it's a, it's a technique that John has, and and as he says, uh, that we worked under very very hard circumstances. We worked late into the night, four or five in the morning, cold. Uh, certainly not uh, big uh, A movie kind of stuff, you know. And I had never heard a complaint. I got angry one night and went home. And uh, I didn't get finally home. I didn't get home because no, we wouldn't let him. They wouldn't home. let me go. But uh, <laughs> well, it was 4:30 and they hadn't used me yet. <laughs> and they'd called me at eight in the evening, you know. But 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 I could, I never saw anybody. I never really saw anybody, uh, you know, have anything but love and feeling for each other. And I've I've learned to. Uh, you know a lot about this. I, I don't think uh, I'm, uh, I don't think it'll happen again unless I make another picture with John. You know, and I know he doesn't want me anymore. But... Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but oh well, John. Well, John. John. Uh, that, that was a most moving experience too, because uh, it, it wasn't a big part. And I loved doing it, and there's a moment in that film that I cherish. That John. John helped me in enormously. It's a silent shot. It's a shot between the, my, well, it's a picture about retarded children. John was very sensitive and did a lovely job, and under grave circumstances in this film, with, with the star, one of the stars. And there's a moment in which my daughter, who is in her 30s,